I am that amazing. <laughs> uh, you tell yourself that, honey. You tell yourself that. Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. Huh. There's one way to... <gasps> oh. Get back, Sandal! Don't let him touch you! Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. You're welcome. The name's Bodon Fedek, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been hello. mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. It's a bit complicated, but you're welcome to come along. Complicated? <laughs> Somehow I imagine that only says half of it. <laughs> Thank you for the offer, but there may be more excitement on your path than is good for my boy and me. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune. Goodbye. Now then, okay. let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we? Okay. Let's see. We'll be off as soon as this mess is clean. All right. Done. Thank you kindly for all your assistance. Ooh, more pretty stones. Odd. We'll be off as soon as this mess is cleaned up. Thank you kindly for all your assistance. Of course. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello, Sandal. Hello. <laughs> Bad dreams, huh? It... It seems so real. Well, it is real. Sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it... talks to the Horde. And we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. The Archdemon? Is that the dragon? I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Oh. Any other surprises I should know about? Other than dying young and the whole defeat the blight alone thing? No. I'm all 
tapped out for surprises. Anyhow, oh. you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Oh. Let's... Let's, uh... I'm gonna rest a bit first. This... This sort of session was just going to be... Going around... Socializing, talking with people, etc. So... Just a chill little session, but it seems we have visitors. Ah, Hello. it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fennec, at your service once again. I saw your camp and remember the kind offer that you made the last time we met. And is there anywhere safer for a poor merchant and his son to sleep? I think not. I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? You are no inconvenience. You're free to stay, just as long as you mind yourselves. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank the kind lady, won't you, boy? Thank you, kind lady. <laughs> we won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. Okay. Perfect. Let's start from newest to oldest. Hello, Why are we Jen? stopping? We're working together. I think I should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? Are you all right? You were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. Okay. I've never seen a canary before. Tell me about your people. No. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Get used to disappointment. People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. <laughs> well, how the hell aren't we? Many humans have said that to me. I do not understand it. If I were indeed hostile, you would be bleeding. So this is you being calm and helpful. I'd like to know. Couldn't you tell? Okay. You said you were in the army. I am. What made you decide to become a soldier? Decide. I am a Sten of the Beresad. I did not choose to be who I am any more than you did. Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, Dwarf. What do you mean by that? My people have been at war since the moment we set foot in the Northern Islands. Mm, haven't you tried diplomacy? Words fail when your opponent's native language is deceit. I do not see how this matters. Seheron and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. Alright. True, but what's your hurry? What a strange language you speak. You say hurry, where I would say duty. It's not your duty to handle the blight, though. No, it is yours, and you are chatting with me instead. Um, all right. Nice speaking with As you. As you wish. Oh, he approved? Oh, didn't sound like it, but all right. Hello. Yes? 
Yeah. I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What would someone like you be doing in Lord of Rings Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? Uh... No, beautiful young woman, just don't seem to like You just don't seem to belong in places. They don't teach you how to fight in the cloister, Did you they? think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Hmm. What did you do before that? I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Okay. Hello, Morgan. What do you wish of me? I'd like to ask you something. If you must. You grew up in the Kakari Wild, yeah? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? I'm curious. What's wrong with that? Any number of cats could inform you of the answer <laughs> to that question, but have it your way. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. And you remained unnoticed? For the most part. Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. I can just imagine. I rather doubt that. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl and naturally he was arrested. That was quick thinking. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak and two, that she finds him attractive. <laughs> I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? I have... I have no idea. I'm not human. Do not speak to me of trivialities. Your culture is not so entirely different. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. And yet here you are. Yes, here I am. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Alright. Alright. Now, let's talk to our Grey Warden friend. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away.
So you said our Eamon raised oh, Did you? I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. I thought you were raised by the Chantry. Oh, there you go, listening to me again. You'd think you'd have gotten past that already. I ended up in the Chantry, sure, but I didn't start there. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. Why did he send you off to the church? Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Aww. Anyhow, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. Mm. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten, just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. You're pro probably luckier than most orphans. I suppose you're right. I wasn't raised as the Arl's son, though, if you're picturing that. I slept in hay out in the stables, not on silk sheets. I mm. remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Aww. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You were young. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle. So he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Okay. Hello, Fora. Oh, why you little? What? What? Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Oh. Why is a war dog? There's hardly any blood drawn. Still, he shouldn't have. Oh. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. <laughs> I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. <laughs> well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Mm. Mm. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Oh. What are you doing? I'd never feed you another human being. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. <laughs> a putrid, half-eaten hare is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. <laughs> it's about the towns. Oh, why doesn't he share his food with me? You are welcome to this if you really want it. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. 
and tell him not to do it again. Okay. Oh, nice. You're a nice gift. Don't do it again. You're a war dog, not a nursemaid. Not a nursemaid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's just gonna watch. You are a true warrior and worthy of respect. Trying to find a way through the earth, are we? <laughs> it's going to take some time, you know. Well, good luck with that. Okay. Okay. Alright. Alright. There's some little... I've just... I've just done a little bit of gift giving. And, uh, let's see if there are any new dialogue options at all. Hello, Liliana. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What was life like in the Chantry? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace, and in that stillness I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature oh. of religious folk, I suppose. Condescending? How so? When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want mm -hmm. to believe that he's gone. So that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Hmm. I... Whoa. I would... I, I prefer your ideas to the ideas of the Chantry, then. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yes? I'd like to talk about well, one more. Well, here I am. So you are a traveling minstrel. Do you have tales Of to course share? I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. <laughs> Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Okay. Do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Flemeth? Morgan's mother was called Flemeth. Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devourer of men. <laughs> Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon-touched, who dwells in the mists. <laughs> she didn't really introduce herself as such, but she probably just has I suppose that's name. possible. But why would one adopt the name of a feared abomination? Mm. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. <laughs> they say that if you're bad, 
Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. <laughs> Tell me the whole story. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. What happened then? Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle ran red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. Hmm. That sounds vaguely familiar. Do you know any stories from Norway? Of course. Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the mm. Knight of Ole. Hmm. Sounds interesting. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Mm. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Mm, continue. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Did she win the tourney? Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. 
Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. That's terrible. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier.